the expectations for someone that's on a tryout for a community camp, I don't think they're very high. So I, I say all that to kind of talk about a guy, Jacor Pearson. And I hope I'm saying his name right. All right. Five foot seven, 178 pounds. This is what, that's what he measured in at this, his uh, pro day. Let's look at some of his pro day numbers because I don't think he was a combine invite. 13 reps on bench press. 37-inch vertical leap, which is good. 10-1 broad jump. That's good. Not great. 40-yard uh, dash. First attempt, 4-3-8. Second attempt, 4-4-1. Uh, his 20-yard his shuttle, 4.07. That is terrific. His three-cone, 7.07, which I'm surprised that the three-cone wasn't better than that. Like, and what, listen, that's really good. But, you know, for him to be a 5'7", 178-pound guy, like, I thought he would be in like the sixes, right? Like 6.78 or in that range, right? Just to have that really quick, short area change of direction with short legs and get going the other way. Uh, I would have expected something like that. But nonetheless, that's still good. And his path, I always feel with guys like this because this was kind of like my path to the NFL. And just trying to get an opportunity to not get drafted and then have to find your way to – you know, to just get an opportunity by going to Destroying's one-on-one. So if y'all don't know who Destroying is, Destroying is uh, a guy. He was a kicker at UCF, all right? And then he had to pick between being a, 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 a kicker at UCF or pursuing his streaming, everything that he's doing streaming. And I think he made the right decision. All right, he made he made the right decisions and decided I'm going to stick with streaming over being a kicker at UCF. And he's blown up. He's making a lot of money. I just heard him the other day say that uh, there was something going on with YouTube. He had to have some checks be sent to his house. His mom opened up the check and called him and thought there was an issue. And she's like, bro, like, son, you, I, I found this YouTube check and it was like something crazy, like, uh, like almost $200,000. And he's like, well, yeah, like, that's what I'm making every month. All right. So he's making like damn near 200000 a month. And that was previously, it's probably even crazier right now. So we're talking about a guy who's making a lot of money, uh, definitely a lot more than he probably would be making kicking unless he was one of the better kickers in the league. But anyways, he puts all these one-on-one -on -one events. And Jacor Pearson was just destroying, no pun intended, everyone at these, at this one-on-one -on -one event. And you start to get noticed that way. And guys get different uh, noticed in a bunch of different ways. And I'm going to get to a comp for Pearson as well. But he's killing everybody there. He finds his way into the XFL. And I, I'm a little jealous. I'm a little jealous because I wish there was the XFL when I was coming out. Now, listen, and, and Chris said, Croc, not just one time. And he's a five-time winner. All right, five-time winner. So I'm a little jealous, though, because... When, when I was coming out, you only had really one option, one higher level option in America, all right? And that was playing in the Arena Football League. Now, they got different leagues. They got the, the AFL, which I played in. They got the uh, IFL, lower level, not making as much money. And these different leagues, all right? But it was like, man, it was like Arena League, which I made cool money, but not great. Or you can go to CFL. Now, the CFL was interesting because you – and I would – if, if, if Pearson doesn't make it in the NFL, I bet my bottom dollar, he, you, you find him in the CFL sometime soon. I, I bet that's what's going to happen. It was interesting to just see what everybody's path to the NFL was like and then how the, the business side of things and how you could just be gone. You know, you're there one minute, you're gone. I saw a lot of guys get cut, man, a lot of guys. And it was just crazy. Like, wow, he got cut? Why? Oh, well, they just wanted to sign this other guy. I'm like, so it's not even anything that he did or didn't do on the field. He just, they just want to bring this guy in at this totally different position. And that's how it works in the NFL. So with Pearson, I'm hoping that he gets a legit opportunity. We saw the video going viral on uh, 49ers Instagram accounts. Uh, you know, the big dogs like my guy, Brad Graham with uh, uh, the SF 49ers. And I saw it on Twitter and it's just like, just dusting the guy. Perfect throw over the outside shoulder. I don't even know who threw that ball. But terrific throw. And you just see the speed and explosiveness. And I'm like, man, Pearson, there's something there. And I remember, again, how 
Andrew Hawkins talked about how the 49ers, not 49ers, but Kyle Shanahan and Mike McDaniel found him and those through YouTube clips. And those things make a difference because at the end of the day, they're just looking for talent. And he's a smaller guy. I think there's a spot for him in the NFL because of just how he is and how he plays and quick twitch. Maybe, you know, can he return? I'm, I'm assuming with this, this type of athletic profile, but I'm, I'm rooting for him. And I'm always rooting for the underdogs. All right, I'm always rooting for the people that uh, the guys count out. I've made it very public on Twitter. I am really rooting for Jordan Love. Uh, and I know y'all are, Croc, he's a Green Bay Packer. You're supposed to hate them. Listen, these are people, <laughs> first and foremost. And again, I talked to a lot of people. Like the, the one thing I realized when I got to the NFL, I was a fan of the game more than anything else. And then I realized right away, these guys are just like me and you. They just got more money. That's it. But they're normal people. So uh, I can kind of look at Jordan Love's situation and how people have counted him out, how people have doubted, doubted him. And I'm it's like, I'm rooting for him. Same with Trey Lance, right? Like people doubted Trey Lance out and tried to kick him to the curb. And I get it, high draft pick and everything. And they're like, ah, nah, he's he's trash. He's a bust. And I was like, man, I'm rooting for Trey Lance. Whether he's on the 49ers or elsewhere, like I'll forever be rooting for him. And hopefully that, you know, to see him become successful. And same with, a, a, a guy like Pearson or Jordan Love, and, and I just want to see these guys do very well and end up just having these long, luxurious <laughs> careers, hopefully. Uh, but Pearson, I don't know if the 49ers signed him. It feels like all the things you see, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I, I don't know if he's on the 90-man roster right now. Y'all could let me know. I tried to look it up. I didn't see anything on it, so I'm assuming he's not on the 49ers 90-man roster, but He's somebody, if he was, that could be intriguing because you look at the 49ers and you, I got my guy Chris in the chat and he says it's a numbers game, and it really is. And even more than the numbers game, uh, it's just a timing game. It's timing. So, yeah, numbers, but, man, that timing is everything. And, you know, the timing of Brock Purdy, you know, when he was on the 49ers, two quarterbacks going down, right? Let's say if it was 2019 and Brock Purdy was on the 49ers, would have never had an opportunity. Didn't have anything to do with the numbers, but Jimmy Garoppolo played the entire year. So he would have never had the opportunity, right? Same with maybe even 2021 for the 49ers, where Jimmy played most of the year. Trey Lance had to fill in for a couple years, and Brock Purdy probably would have never got the opportunity because only two, only one quarterback went down during that time, at a time, right? So it's not even just about numbers. It's about numbers and timing as well. So, you know, you look at it for a guy like Pearson, and I hope the timing – and the numbers align for him, and 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 uh, he gets a legit opportunity because there's, there's a lot of ability there. Quick twitch, acceleration. You see what he's doing in the XFL. He's really killing it. I want to say he's either the leading receiver in the XFL or led the, the season just ended on Saturday. But he either led the league or he was second behind Hakeem Butler. All right, so he's in that range as far as receptions, yards, everything right there with Hakeem Butler. They're neck and neck for one and two. And – that tells you right there, like, bro, I can play. Just need an opportunity. 